Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm making a Christmas card. I know it's not really time for such things, but I'm participating in a blog hop with the Crafty Christmas Club, and they do Christmas cards every month on the 25th right? It's such a good idea. So I was so excited to join them when they asked me if I wanted to. And I think it's a great idea to celebrate um, the upcoming holiday by making a card on the 25th of every month. So that's what I did. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This card all started with this die right here, the Slim Fancy Diagonal Stripe die from Pink Fresh Studio. I had just received this die and I thought when I ordered it that it would look so good as candy cane stripes. So I decided I would cut it from white cardstock and then do an ink blended panel to go behind it. So I have my candied apple distress oxide ink and then spun sugar. Perfect for candy, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna ink blend those across this panel that measures three and five eighths by eight and five eighths, which is the exact size of that die cut panel that will go over the top of it. And then I can put those onto a slimline card. Slimline cards are like one of my most favorite things to make right now. So that's why I was so excited to get that die and create some fun backgrounds with it. So I'm just going back and forth between the two colors to get the concentration of ink that I want and the blend that I'm looking for. So it they're really, you know, different colors as far as one's very soft and one's very bold. So it does take a little bit of back and forth and eventually it does blend out and look fabulous. I really like it. So as with all of my ink blended panels, I'm bringing in my Distress Oxide sprayer filled with water and spritzing that with water. Then I'll pick up the excess water with a paper towel because I can not refrain from spraying these things. I can't, I love it so much. So there it is with the background on it, but I'm gonna let it dry for a minute before I put it together. And here is the stamp set that I'm using to make today's card. It's called Sweet Christmas, and it is from Lawn Fawn. So I've stamped out the images I wanna use, and then I'm adding the little details. So some buttons to my little gingerbread boys, a window to the house. I'm gonna stamp an extra um, gumdrop, and then I eventually did stamp an extra tree. I decided I would use two. And here are the Copic markers that I will be coloring with today. I am um, using some whipped cream cardstock and the jet black ink from Lawn Fawn for the base for all this coloring. Um, if you like simple Copic coloring, then you have come to the right place. That's what I love to do. I'm using only um, two markers on the gingerbread people and um, then I'll bring in a third one to do the house because it's a little bit bigger image. And then I just like to go back and forth between my two shades and add, like right here, I'm adding back in some of those darker spots. So I colored all three of the gingerbread people the same way. And then for the house, I will show you the coloring for that. I'm starting with my darkest color and outlining everything. And then I'll bring in my mid-tone, E13, and I will go around that, kind of blending that out and um, moving more towards the center, which will be my lightest area for this coloring. And then E11 to smooth and blend all that out in the middle. I wanted this to be a little bit more intense, so I am gonna go over the whole entire thing a second time, and it's really worth it. So if you find yourself thinking something's too subtle, definitely give it a try going over it a second time. And it really and enriches those colors. So here I am back with my mid-tone and then I'm leaving just a very small area that I will go over right there with my lightest color. And then I have some pink and red markers I'll be bringing in to accent the house and the little candies. And I love a gingerbread house. One of the very first Christmas cards I ever made was a gingerbread house card. So I love them. From the beginning of my stamping days, love them. So I am adding red accents around the door and around the roof, and then I'm gonna leave the top 
part of the roof white. And then you'll see how I dress up all these um, elements for my card, including this roof, and make them um, look a little candied. And I really love this set. It is so cute. I know it's an older one, but it is just timeless, right? You can use this anytime and make some really cute cards. I made a card with this um, when I was playing with the Build a House die set from Lawn Fun. So I will make sure and link that video below. I'm just gonna warn you, the colors for that card might be really similar to this card because I love these colors. <laughs> All right, so to dress these up and make them look more like candy, I am using my Zig two-way glue pen with the fine tip. It's kind of a bullet tip. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on some um, sparkly glitter. It's a fine glitter, not a chunky glitter. So it kind of makes it look like sugar. I love it so much. Now for my smaller images, I have them attached with my needle nose tweezers, and then I just use my finger to kind of hold it up and put the glue on it. And that seems to work for me on these tiny little areas. And then I just hold it over my coffee filter, sprinkle the glitter on, and that will catch all my glitter and I can pour it back in later. And my coffee filter, by the way, is sitting in a container that once upon a time held some Cool Whip and it holds those coffee filters perfectly. So I like to put a big stack in there and it holds them up really nicely after I have used it for embossing or glitter, I can take out the top one, throw it away, and use the next one. So um, one of you had asked on a previous video about that, so I thought I would just talk about it for a brief second. All right, so all my things have been glittered. I've put my two backgrounds together and added a strip of glitter cardstock, that's Pixie Dust cardstock from Lawn Fun, and I hand cut the wave there and stuck it on, and that will be the ground for my scene. I masked off this image and I'm stamping just the word sweet in lawn lobster ink, and then I will re-ink the entire sentiment and stamp it again. So now I have a longer sentiment that's going to say, have a sweet, sweet Christmas. And these images or um, sentiments are from the same sweet Christmas stamp set. And I, you know, you have a long card, so a long sentiment is kind of nice for this. All right, so now I'm going to adhere all the images. I'm laying some out, trying to figure out placement, and then most of the things will be glued on, but I did use some foam adhesive to pop up my little gingerbread people. So they have a little bit extra interest. Maybe it looks more like they're moving or, you know, just um, adds to the fun element of this scene. I have my two gumdrops there on either side of my house, and it was about this time that I felt like my house was just needing something, so you'll see me add to that in just a minute. Um, now I'm gonna stick on my gingerbread girl, but I should have waited. I really had to um, pick this up and move it around a few times to get my placement. I thought I had figured it out beforehand, and. No, so now I'm scooting her over, which I shouldn't have done because I'm gonna run out of room. But here's my tip, if you're like me and have to move things around, when you're working with foam squares like this and they're stuck down, when you try to remove them, try and use like a twisting motion and they will come off pretty good. So this, you can see I'm gonna twist, twist, and it came off pretty good right there. All right, so, I am adding the little gingerbread boy. I had to move him and I ripped some paper, so I glued that back down. I'm sure these things happen to you. And so seeing me do it, you know we're all in this together. And there's no stress in stamping, right? We can usually fix these things and they work out. And if not, it's just paper. We can make a new one. We can cover it up with something too. I love covering things up when I have a little boo-boo and no one will ever know. So I've attached my sentiment now and trimmed off the excess. And here I'm gonna stamp some extra candy pieces from this set and color them, die cut them, add glitter to them, and glue them at the top of this card around that sentiment. Then I'm gonna stick this entire panel down to my slimline card, which measures 
measures nine by eight inches and is scored at four inches. And this will fit perfectly in the business size envelopes that I have. So always check the envelopes that you're gonna use to make sure your card will fit in it because there are a variety of business size envelopes. Okay, I have taken the heart from that stamp set and stamped it on my door. I'm gonna color that in with a red marker and then add some glitter. And I feel like that was the finishing touch that my little house really needed. And that is my April Christmas card. I am so excited about this blog hop. I think it's really fun to do a Christmas card on the 25th of every month, just to kind of get you ready. And maybe then you can make some cards that are a little bit more special like this one. All right, I will have a list to my blog in the comments or the um, description box below where you can click and then check out all the rest of the creations for this hop. All right, have a fabulous day and happy stamping. Bye.